Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Introduction to ah, 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 the Dark Net. So I've had a lot of questions, a lot of like inquiries from my fan base about the deep web and, and the dark net and Tor services and all of this type of stuff. So I'm slowly now going through and trying to create classes to explain all of these things to you. Um, I have been talking about a lot of this, uh, especially in my daily blobs and other things, and I have found one of the problems with many of my fans is that you don't understand that many of these things that we're talking about are in fact separate concepts. So the deep web is a specific concept. The dark net is a specific concept. Tor or Freenet are specific products or services. These are all different things that, that vaguely encompass the same realm. So this is something that's very important for you to understand. So as we talked about in the introduction to the deep web class, the deep web is any web page that is not indexed by a search engine for whatever reason, whether it's the robots.txt file tells a search engine to bugger off that, that you don't want the website to be indexed, whether the website is some kind of content management system where it requires a login, username, credentials to get past the initial screen, therefore the little, little Google spiders can't get past, or if it's part of something called a dark net. So when we're talking about a dark net, basically this is a cluster of computers that are meshed together in order to create a network. And in order to be able to access those computers or those services, you have to have special software installed onto your computer. So if basically these web services that are out there, uh, Google cannot simply be able to go out or Yahoo can't simply go to be able to go out and index because you have to have some type of software on your computer. So the dark net is a very, very specific concept within the larger idea of the deep web. So when we're talking about the dark net, basically we're talking about one of two products, although there are other options out there. Generally, we are talking about Tor, and more importantly, or more specifically, Tor services. There's also something called Freenet, which allows you to do the same thing that we're going to be talking about today. Basically, those are the services that encompass what the dark net is, is considered. So many times when people are talking about the dark net, they are in fact talking about Tor services. They use those words interchangeably when in fact they're not. Tor services are a specific product. The dark net itself is more of a concept, an idea. So when we're talking about the dark net, the, the essential definition of a dark net is in order to access the dark net, you have to have some kind of special software installed onto your computer. So the dark net anything that comprises a dark net. It has to use the TCP IP protocols. It has to be theoretically internet accessible, but you have to do something special in order to get into it. So the first thing is, is although it uses internet technologies uh, to maintain itself and to do the communication, you have to, you have to add something else in order to be able to access the information within that dark net. The other main concept with dark nets is that it's supposed to try to maintain your anonymity. So when you go on there, it's supposed to try to maintain your ability to stay anonymous. So in normal IP traffic and normal network traffic, um, nobody cares about whether or not you're anonymous. You may care, but the original, the original creators of TCP IP, the original creators of the internet didn't care. The more communication that goes back and forth, the better for them. So when we're talking about TCP IP packets, TCP IP headers, what's important to understand there is that contains a lot of identifiable information. Um, that basically points back to you. So if anybody gets a hold of that packet, they can gather information and be able to track back to you. Well, in the modern world, you know, the modern world of anonymous, people want to keep their anonymity, so they don't want to be tracked back. So the big concept with the darknet is when you go onto the darknet, when you use a darknet, that you should be able to maintain your anonymity. So the important parts is it uses normal internet and IP and all that technology. You have to install 
install special software in order to be able to access it, and it's supposed to maintain your anonymity. And again, this can be done in multiple ways. There are multiple different products out there in order to create dark nets. Again, the most popular is something called Tor. And again, there's also FreeNet, which is a, a lot of people uh, additionally use. Now, when you're talking about Tor, uh, basically, the initial idea for Tor was that you would be able to route your data traffic through multiple different computers that are all connected into this Tor network so that you could bypass filters in your country. So if you were in an autocratic country uh, where, where they didn't want you to be able to watch CNN.com or The Daily Show, you would be able to be able to connect to the Tor network and it would route your communication through 100 or however many computers to get the uh, so that you could access networks outside of what's being blocked and also by routing information through this massive network it would keep your anonymity so if you go to cnn.com or if you go to a website the information that that website would be able to glean from you would not be personally identifiable. It would be part of this whole mesh of the Tor. So the original idea with, with Tor is it was supposed to keep your anonymity for going to normal websites. If you were going to CNN.com, if you were going to BankofAmerica.com, if you were going to Wikipedia, if you were going to Anonymous... We love anonymous.com. You know, if you try to go to those sites, the original idea was it keeps your anonymity there. Well, then they came up with the idea of something called Tor Services. Now, it's very important to understand that when we're talking about websites, actually within Tor itself, these are called Tor Services. So what they decided, what they came up with, is instead of always routing all the all the, the traffic out to websites in, in the normal internet, that you would be able to create and host websites on your own computers at home, and then through the power of Tor, people would simply be able to be redirected to you. So basically, you can use a web browser, you can connect to Tor, and then you could use a services address to go to the specific web website that you want to go to. Now why this is powerful is because since you're in the Tor network and ev everything uh, it tries to maintain your anonymity, even the web servers themselves maintain the anonymity. So if you're trying to do a black market website, if you're trying to sell crack, if you're trying to create the next Wikipedia, you can actually set up a website that the entire world can get to, but the system itself that, that routes the information to that website will try to maintain your anonymity. So that is why this is very, very, very powerful. So when people are talking about the dark net, this is what they're talking about. They're talking about these Tor services or the services that you can also get by using Freenet. So these are websites but they are all within the Tor cloud. So you can't go to Google and go to like blackmarket.com and get to one of these sites. Basically, you have to have the Tor software installed on your computer, then you can open the browser, then you can go to one of these services addresses and that will drop you onto the site. Once you're dropped onto the site though, we are then now talking about standard web-based technologies, HTML, JavaScript, PHP, whatever. This is a standard web server, it is simply connected connected uh, to the internet using one of these services. So let's go over to the computer for a second so I can show you a couple of things just to give you a better idea of how all of this stuff kind of works. So basically, again, whenever we're talking about the dark net, the, the two uh, things that, that, that we're going to be talking about is either Tor, so you can find Tor at torproject.org, or Freenet. So again, share chat, browse anonymously on the free network. Again, these create their own networks within the internet. Now what I'm going to be showing you today is if you go down, there's a lot of different things you can download and use, uh, use with Tor, but what I downloaded uh, and, and used today is something called the Tor Browser. So instead of installing the full suite onto my computer, basically this is just a web browser that you can install on your computer and use the Tor network. So once I, uh, I installed the Tor browser, as we can see here, this is Tor browser. It's basically just a Firefox derivative. And I've come to one of the directories they have in Tor. So this is one of the Tor directories. What you will see 
is this is the services address up here. And you will notice it looks absolutely and utterly nothing like a normal DNS address that you're used to, you know, not blah, 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 dot com, blah, 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 dot biz, blah, 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 dot info. No, whenever you set up your web server onto Tor, and, and connect the services, they will automatically give you one of these, these uh, services addresses. So you don't really get to say what it is. And it will be a whole mess. Like I say this, D-P-P-M-F-X-A-A-C-U, blah, 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 blah. So just remember when you're going to be using these Tor services, you're not going to get nice human readable addresses. So, uh, so with a lot of these things, once you find them, bookmark the hell out of them because I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be able to remember this thing. Now, if you go down, basically this works like, like any other web browser, but it's all within these services. So I clicked on this little black market link over here. And if we open this up, we can see this is a different services address and it's for this black market reload. I'm not gonna log into any of this stuff because I don't, I, I don't wanna be on the NSA's radar. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the basic idea behind the darknet. So when I'm going to these websites, this is trying to maintain my an anonymity. And also, I can't find any information out about the web servers unless I try to hack them myself. So, so normally, uh, if we were on the normal web, I could do a who is search, or I could do a lot of ways to try to find out who runs this website or where the server is located. Again, and within the dark net, within Tor, that functionality isn't there. But really, that's, that's all there is for the most part for the most part to the darknet. So the darknet is simply a network of computers on the internet that uses the standard internet type technologies that basically are meshed together. You have to use a special piece of software to in order to access them and they try to maintain your anonymity. That is what the darknet is. Sometimes it's a Tor service, sometimes it's a free net, sometimes there are a lot of other pieces of software, there's a lot of other specific services out there. The idea behind the darknet is that this overall methodology, anonymity, separated service using normal internet type technologies. And that's, that is the dark net for you. Uh, we are going to be doing more classes on Tor services and some other things, but I figured this would just be a way to clear some things up. So the dark net is a component of the deep web. Tor is something that uses the, basically the, the dark net ideology, but these are all entirely separate things. And so you just should keep, keep that in mind whenever you're going to be dealing with this stuff. So, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. Today's class was Introduction to the Dark Connect. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.